continuing on our study on faith today we will be studying on the faith of the 10 lepers and also Bartimaeus. Luke chapter 17 verse 11 onwards. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When Jesus saw them, he said, go, show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. <coughs> he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one in returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. The original translation says, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. Now Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. And he was between the borders, the outskirts of Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance. Because in those days, Leprosy was considered a punishment for sin. People with leprosy were put out of the village or town. They could not enter the village until they were healed of their leprosy. And in those days, there were no professional doctors or hospitals. They had to go to the local quack. There was no treatment for leprosy in those days. A cure for leprosy was discovered only in 1940. So a person who had leprosy would die with leprosy. They could not enter the city or even come close to any person or they would be stoned to death. If any person approached them unknowingly, they would cover their lips and shout, unclean, unclean. They would wear sackcloth and stay on the outskirts of the village. When they saw Jesus passing by, they stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. The ten lepers called Jesus, Master. We also call Jesus as Master, we call Him Lord, we call Him God, we call Him Savior, Helper, Redeemer, Protector, etc. Who is a Master? Master is a person under whom we are subjects. It may be a king, a prince, a ruler, our bosses, owners, etc. In short, a Master is a person of authority who gives orders and we are to obey it. When the ten lepers called out to Jesus saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us, the Bible says Jesus saw them. Do we call out to Jesus as Master? If we call him Master, do we treat him as a Master? Or do we become his Masters? Are we giving orders? 
or are we taking orders from Jesus? If we call him master, we are supposed to obey his orders, his commands, his instructions. But do we obey? He gives us simple instructions. But because of our reasoning, we fail to do what has been instructed and fail to receive our miracles. The ten lepers not only called Jesus master, but they asked for mercy. When we are sick, or when we are in need, or when we are facing a problem, what do we call out Jesus for? We call out for healings, we call out for blessings, we call out for miracles, we call out for solutions, to our problems, etc. But we never call out for mercy. The ten lepers realized, they acknowledged that they were sinners and they repented and asked Jesus for mercy. And when Jesus heard them calling for mercy, he stopped and told them to go show yourselves to the priests. He gave them a solution to their problem. In the same way, when we ask for mercy, Jesus stops and he gives us the solution to our problems. If we seek Jesus, if we seek his kingdom and his righteousness, then all these things that we need will be given to us also. But instead of seeking Jesus, his kingdom and his righteousness, we are seeking healings, blessings and miracles. And these seem to be going far away from us. We have studied in Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Seek first his kingdom, his righteousness and all these things will be given to us as well. The moment Jesus said to them, go, show yourselves to the priests, they left his presence in faith. They believed that they were healed. And as they went, they were cleansed. When Jesus said, go, show yourselves to the priests, they had not received their healing. They could see with their eyes that they were not healed. They could still see their leprosy. Their body parts were still melting. They were stinking. Yet they did not argue. They did not discuss with Jesus. But they obeyed the instructions that Jesus had given them. Now if Jesus has instructed them to go to the village. They have leprosy. And they cannot enter the village to show themselves to the priests. If they did so, they could be stoned to death. Yet, they obeyed the instructions of Jesus as humble servants to obey their masters. They went into action and it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Only when they put their faith into action and went, believing that Jesus has already healed them, they were cleansed. Moving into action after receiving the instructions from Jesus was the activation of their faith which led to their miracle. Have we made Jesus our master? We call him our master. But we want him to do everything for us. We don't want to take instructions or orders, but we want to give orders to Jesus. We are all the time asking Jesus for do, do this for me, do that for me. You heal me, you bless me, etc. We treat him as a genie who obeys the master. It is we who become the masters of Jesus. A master is a person who is in control. Are we under control of Jesus or are we under the control of Satan? We say Jesus is our master, 
but our actions show that we are masters of Jesus. We are controlling Jesus. And somebody else is mastering us. Whose instructions do we obey? Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my command. Do we obey his command? What is his command? Jesus has given us one of the greatest commands that covers the entire law and commandments. And that is, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Do we love everybody? If we say we love God, we love Jesus, God is saying we are liars. He's saying how can we love God whom we cannot see when we don't love our own brothers and sisters and husbands and wives, parents, children, in-laws, neighbors, bosses whom we can see. 1 John chapter 4 verse 8 says, whoever does not love, does not know God, because God is love. This verse says, we don't even know God if we do not love others, because God is love. God dwells in us, that means love dwells in us. And when love dwells in us, can we walk in offense, anger, hatred, bitterness, jealousy, pride, selfishness, etc. We can only walk in love with everyone. We are so blessed that we were not born in the Old Testament times. They had to keep 613 laws and commandments to enter the kingdom of heaven. Even if they kept 612 laws and commandments and failed in one, they were not qualified to enter the kingdom of heaven. We are so blessed today. We only have to believe in the finished works of Jesus and we are saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, If you declare, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Again, Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. We can't boast that we have prayed, we have sacrificed, we have fasted, we have given to the orphanages, we fed the hungry, we visited the sick, we visited the prison prisoners, we kept his commands. We cannot boast of anything. We cannot be saved by our good works because no matter how hard we try, our good is not good enough. For the perfectly holy and completely righteous God who alone grants salvation. Nor can we be saved by our moral perfection. No matter how moral or how perfect we are, no matter how good our deeds are or how good our righteous acts are, the Bible says all our righteous acts are like filthy rags, dirty cloth. Isaiah 64 verse 6 says that all of us have become like one who is unclean and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags, dirty cloth. So we can't boast of our good deeds. We can't boast of what we have done, but we can boast of what Jesus has done for us. For it is by grace that we have been saved through our faith, through our believing, 
in the finished works of Jesus. Coming back to the ten lepers, what was the instruction Jesus gave to the ten lepers? Jesus said, go, show yourselves to the priests. Now, why did Jesus say, go show yourselves to the priests? He could have said, your faith has healed you or be healed, etc. But he said, go show yourselves to the priests. What has the priest got to do with their healing? When a person gets leprosy, it is a priest who declares him unclean and he is sent out of the village into isolation, into quarantine and it is only a priest who can declare him clean once he is healed and it is because of the priest the person is isolated or quarantined outside the village. He is separated from his family and made to live all alone and die all alone. He, so he must be having bitterness, anger, hatred, unforgiveness against the priest, which is again a sin. And that is why Jesus is saying to them, go show yourselves to the priest. Go and get reconciled with the priest and he will declare you clean. He will give you a medical certificate saying that you are healed, you are clean. Then go and offer the sin offering that Moses commanded you and then you will be able to live with your people. The moment Jesus said, go show yourselves to the priest, the ten lepers left and as they went, believing they were healed, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. Imagine how happy he must be. All his life he would have been a leper, he would have remained a leper. He would have died as a leper. But because of Jesus' mercy, he received his healing. He came back praising God in a loud voice. He did not care what other people thought about him. He did not bother about what he would see or she would see. He rejoiced. He praised God with a loud voice. He threw himself at the feet of Jesus. He thanked him. He was grateful to him. And praise God, he was not a Jew, he was not a Christian, he was a Samaritan. Samaritans were Jews who had mixed marriages, intercaste marriages, and that is why they were treated as outskirts, outcasts. <laughs> they were treated as untouchables, sinners, lepers, etc. The Samaritan, when he saw that he was healed, came back and glorified God. He praised God with a loud voice. God has been so gracious to us. He has been so merciful to us. We were all destined to die and go to hell. But he sent his only son Jesus to bear the punishment for our sins. Jesus bore our sins in his body. He bore the punishment for our sins. He died our death. He went to hell in our place. And he set us free from eternal death and damnation. But do we glorify God? Do we praise God? Do we thank God for giving us this new life? So many of us would have been in the grave. God has given us a new life. But how many times do we praise God and thank God in a loud voice? Most of the time when we are in trouble, 
we come to Jesus. But when our problems are solved, we tend to forget him. Most of us are like the nine remaining nine lepers who did not come to give glory to God. We need to ask ourselves, are we the one leper who came to thank Jesus or are we among the remaining nine? We may say we, when we go to church, we fulfill our obligation. We say the rosary, we do the navinas, etc., etc. That is not enough. No matter how much you pray, no matter how much you serve in the church, you may be doing everything in the church, devoting your time in the church. But if there is no word of God, it is useless. Because the word of God is God himself. And that word of God is Jesus. The word that became flesh and dwelt amongst us. If we have the word rooted in our heart, we have God in us. And God fights our battles. For the one who is in us is greater than the one who is in the world. Again, we see another man of faith, Bartimaeus. As Jesus and his disciples were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed Jesus. And there was this blind man sitting by the roadside, a beggar. When he heard the commotion of people passing by, he asked someone what the commotion is all about. And somebody told him that Jesus was passing by. When he heard that Jesus was going by, he was so excited that he began shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This blind man has not seen Jesus, but he must have heard a lot about Jesus. And all the miracles that he has done. And praise God, the Bible says in Romans 10, 7, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Bartimaeus was built up in faith because he had heard about Jesus. And now that he knows that Jesus was passing by, he began calling out Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He could not see Jesus. He could not go to Jesus because of his blindness. But he had another option. He began calling out, shouting at the top of his voice, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This was his only chance to get the attention of Jesus. Who knows when Jesus will come back this way. He had to shout at the top of his voice. He had to shout out loud to get Jesus' attention. He must have shouted, he must have screamed, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. There was a large crowd. There was a large commotion. He's at the side of the road. He does not know where Jesus is in the crowd. His voice has to reach Jesus. He knew Jesus was in the crowd and shouting out to him was the only way to get his attention. When we are in trouble and we call out to God, how do we call out to God? Do we open our mouth? When it comes to prayers, we pray in our mind. We whisper. Even our neighbors cannot hear what we are saying. But when it comes to other things, our voices are so loud. Even the other building people or the whole society members can hear our voice. In the parties, we want our voices to be heard. 
we will scream and speak. But when it comes to church, prayer time, we are so decent that even our whisper cannot be heard. We don't have to be told to speak loudly in the parties. We don't have to be told to open our mouths and speak. This blind man had no other option but to shout out loud. If you are standing by the roadside and someone starts shouting or screaming, don't you get irritated? Or if you're in the church and someone's phone rings, don't we get annoyed? Don't we look at that person and crucify him, nail him to the cross? We are getting disturbed. Don't you know you should keep your mobile on silent when you come to church? Bartimaeus is shouting on top of his voice, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Why was he asking for mercy? Or what is mercy? Mercy is something that we deserve but God does not give to us. Mercy is something we deserve, but God does not give us. Example, we all have sinned and we all deserve to be punished. We all deserve to go to hell, but God does not punish us. He does not send us to hell, Instead, he accepts us, loves us, heals us, blesses us the moment we repent, the moment we acknowledge that we have sinned. So Bartimaeus cried out for mercy because he acknowledged that he was a sinner. He knew it was because of his sin that he was blind. He knew that the wages of sin is death and destruction. When we call out to God, what do we pray for? We pray for healings, we pray for blessings, we pray for miracles, we pray for prosperity, we pray for good health, wealth, pro properties, we pray for financial blessings, we pray for children. The list is never ending. But in our prayers, we never ask for mercy. Many people say, what mercy, brother? I have not sinned. I have not done anyone any harm. I don't gossip. I don't slander. I do not spoil names of other people. I do not talk bad about others. I do not commit murder. I do not commit covet my neighbor's goods. I did not covet my neighbor's wife. I did not covet my neighbor's husband. I'm a very good person. I never interfere. I never get involved in anything else, in anyone's matters. I've heard many people say, I have never done any wrong. Such people, I tell you, should be put up on the altar. The Bible clearly says we all have sinned and there are people who claim that they have never done anything wrong. They are the people Jesus told, be the first one to cast a stone on others. Many times when we go to visit in the hospitals, the people tell us, brother, I don't know why these things are happening in our lives. We have not done anyone any harm. We have not done any wrong then why did this happen? It happened because we disobeyed God. We walked according to our ways. We walked according to our plans. Instead of becoming slaves or children of our master, servants of our master, we became masters of Jesus. 
the people who are with Jesus rebuked Bartimaeus. They told him to be quiet. But the more they told him to be quiet, the more they shouted at him. He shouted all the more, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The people who were with Jesus were getting annoyed at this beggar who was shouting loudly. Just as we get annoyed when the mobile phone rings in the church or somebody is making noise or a baby is crying in the church. So all those holy, decent people who are following Jesus began to rebuke Patimius. They told him to be quiet. They must have shouted at him and said, shut up. They must have told him, Jesus has come for us, good people, decent people, holy people, not for you beggars. Shut up and sit quietly. Jesus did not come for the good or holy or pious people, religious people, healthy people or highly educated rich, high-class people. Jesus came for the poor, the homeless, the sick, the sinners. Bartimaeus did not bother about the people. He did not feel offended. He shouted all the more, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He did not feel offended. He did not get discouraged. And he did not keep quiet. He shouted all the more, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And what happened? When he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The Bible says, Jesus stopped. Jesus stopped and said, call him. Every time we call out to Jesus and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, Jesus stops and says, call him. Every time he hears us calling out for mercy, the feet, the legs of Jesus get frozen. He cannot take another step forward. He cannot move further. He stops and says, call him. Or come here, what can I do for you? So the same people who were telling Bartimaeus to shut up were now telling him, go, Jesus is calling you. Shut up, on your feet, Jesus is calling you. How true Psalm 23 is. God prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. No matter what people say to you, keep your mouth shut and God will put your enemies to shame. Bartimaeus threw his cloak aside. He threw his cloak aside, jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. Bartimaeus does three things. He threw his cloak aside, rose up, and went to Jesus. What does throwing the cloak resemble? Beggars were always recognized by their cloaks that they would be wearing. The cloak was his uniform, his identity. People knew him as a beggar because of his cloak. Bartimaeus knew that if Jesus has called him, surely he is going to heal him and he will not need that cloak anymore. And that is the reason why he throws off his cloak. The cloak also represents his past life, which he throws aside to receive a new life. When Jesus gave him the instructions to come, it broke the shackles, it broke the chains, it broke the powers of darkness that were binding him and which had blinded him for many years. When he threw his cloak, he made a decision 
that he would never pick up that cloak again. Are there any blind people here today? Not the physically blind, but spiritually blind. We may not be blind physically, but we all suffer some degree of spiritual blindness. We cannot see the future. We cannot see where we are going, where we are heading, because we have blind spots. In many ways, we are like Bartimaeus. We are held back by blindness. We need help. We look, but we do not see. We have seen the many wonders that God has done in our lives, but we fail to remain faithful to him. We need to throw off our cloaks that bind us, the cloak that represents our personal bondages and strongholds. We need to throw off that cloak that defines us and our old selves, our old lives, our attitudes and behaviors. Sometimes we call it a security blanket. The cloak that we depend on the cloak that conceals our true selves, we need to cast it out. We have to throw off that cloak of who, th who we think we are. We need to get up and go towards Jesus to be redefined, to be remolded in the potter's hands. That cloak needs to come off first, only then we will be able to turn to God. We need to die to ourselves. Only then we will get our solutions. We will come out of spiritual blindness to find the right direction, the narrow path. Just as the blind man threw his cloak, knowing that he will never need it again, we need to throw off our old nature, knowing that we will never need it again. And when Bartimaeus reached Jesus, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Here Jesus is testing his faith. He's asking him, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus knows what he needs. He can see that he is blind, but yet, he asks him, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus is seeing whether he is ready to speak what he believes. And that is what Bartimaeus did. He spoke what he believed and he received what he spoke. Bartimaeus did not say, Lord, I am blind. Heal me. How many times we are saying, I am diabetic, I am arthritic, I am a heart patient, I have blood pressure, I have cholesterol, I have fever, I have cold, I have pain. Luke chapter 6 verse 45 says, the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever we have stored in the heart will come out from our mouth. The blind man Bartimaeus said, Rabbi, Master, I want to see. He acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah. He acknowledged that Jesus was a healer. He acknowledged that Jesus had the power to restore his eyesight. And he said, Rabbi, Master, I want to see. And Jesus said, go, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has healed you. And how do we get this faith? By hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by continuously hearing and hearing by the word of God. Nowhere in the Bible Jesus said, your crying has healed you. Your praising has healed you. 
your praying has healed you your fasting has healed you your kneeling has healed you but he always said your faith has healed you and immediately bartimeus received his sight and followed jesus along the road there was no discussion there was no pleading he did not say jesus heal me restore my sight lay your hands on me spit in my eyes make a paste and apply on my eyes nothing at all just pure faith and immediately he received his sight and after receiving his sight did he go back and pick up the cloak and sit down at the road side to beg what did he do the bible says he followed jesus along the road whom do we follow once we receive our healings our blessings we begin enjoying those blessings and we forget jesus we go back and pick up that old cloak of ours that sinful nature of ours we start eating drinking making merry we forget jesus who has given us a new life then again when sickness or problems come in our lives then again we are searching for jesus jesus where are you where are you lord i'm seeking god i'm searching god i can't find god there is no god god is not lost we are the ones who are lost do not wait until misery strikes you don't wait till sickness strikes you don't wait till your kidney fails don't wait till your liver fails don't wait for any disease to strike you don't wait to cancer to enter your body follow jesus today in fact i would say follow jesus from now onwards nobody has seen tomorrow tomorrow may be too late we might not wake up tomorrow it will be too late tomorrow to repent and come back to jesus i remember when i was going through the heart attack my doctor told me go to the cardiologist right now he knew i was strong in the word i was strong in faith people from his clinic would call me and i would pray over them and they would get healed he knew i was a tough nut to be cracked he said brother i request you you are like my younger brother please go to the cardiologist go to the hospital there is something wrong i said doctor but i am going to india next week on vacation he said brother next week is too far it may be too late go right now to the hospital so don't be like the foolish brides not taking the oil for the lamps the bridegroom will come and go and the door of the banquet hall will be shut and we will be there knocking on the door shouting open the door for us jesus open the door and jesus will say i do not know you go away i do not know you so while there is still time come back to the lord follow jesus he has already given us all a new life he has paid the price for our sins he died for our sins he went to hell in our place and he gave us a new life all of you can testify that you have been given a new life so many times we have missed death we 
we need to follow Jesus, make Jesus the Lord of our lives. Jesus does not want to lose us. He loves us all. And that is why he willingly gave his life for our sake. He paid the punishment for our sins. We deserve to be punished. We deserve to die. We deserve to go to hell. But Jesus was punished in our place. Jesus died our death. He went to hell in our place and gave us a new life, a life of eternity with him in heaven. Let's close our eyes for the final prayer. Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for teaching us that you are our master and we are your servants. Lord, just as you came to this world to serve and not to be served, may we also have the same servant-like attitude. May we do everything from our heart with love as though we are doing it for you. May our love not be in words only, but also in our deeds. May the people around us, in our families, in our workplaces, see you in us. May they see that you are with us. Lord, thank you for teaching us through the faith of the ten lepers. Help us to always take you at your word. Help us to believe your word and apply it in our lives. Help us to put our faith into action and thus receive our healings, blessings and miracles. Lord, help us to be like the Samaritan who, when he saw that he was healed, came back to glorify God. Let us not be like the other nine who did not come back to glorify God. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us through the example of Bartimaeus how we are to call out to you how we should throw off the cloak, get up and come to you and not just sit and cry over our situations. Lord, today we make a decision to call out to you and to you alone, to throw our cloak of unrighteousness, to rise up from our situations and come to you in faith and receive our healings, blessings and miracles and then follow you all the days of our lives. We make a decision never again to pick up our cloak which we have thrown but always follow you. We thank you and we praise you Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.